Hi everybody, welcome to my garden today. Today I'm going to be planting this rose. This is, a, this is an Ethan rose that I'm going to be planting in front of my vegetable garden on the arbor to replace one that I lost last year. I have these beautiful Eden roses on either side of the arbor that, and I lost one last year and the other one I had to cut way back. We had some septic work done in the passageway between the vegetable garden and the circle flower bed and I don't know, somewhere along the line one of the roses died and the other one needed to be cut back. I was going to order one online bare root but the price tag was a bit uh but i was at a box store here recently and i found this one for 15 dollars now if you know anything about these box store roses that are usually on display normally in plastic bags so not normally in these sorts of plastic containers though recently i've been seeing more of these but you know the ones in plastic bags um, they're usually very colorful and it's usually like a tubular, skinny tubular shape. And if you feel it, it, you can squeeze it. And it feels a little bit mushy, like there's some sort of soil or something in there. The packaging usually has a picture of a, the rose at its most beautiful state. And it's very enticing. And we usually buy them. At least I've bought many in the past and have therefore killed many in the past. Because the truth is those sorts of roses have a high failure rate. And the reason they have a high failure rate is because by the time we buy them and bring them in our garden they're usually not at their optimal state a lot of times we're buying unhealthy roses and bringing them into our garden now a rose is a rose right as long as it has a root it has the potential to create beautiful things in the garden but you have to understand that depending on where you buy it you may have to baby that rose a whole lot more but most of us buy the roses at, at not very optimal times and then just plant them in the garden and expect great things. And that's not normally going to happen. I think before we get into deciding how to pick the healthiest of these grocery store roses, it's important that we understand a few terms. One of which is the term bare root rose and the other one is breaking dormancy. Now, in order to understand both of these terms, we might take a look at the cycle that a rose goes through over a growing season. Now, let's pick up somewhere in the summer. I mean, we could pick any time of the season, but we'll just pick up in the summer. In the summer, the rose is, is growing just fine. It has some flowers on it, but in the early, in the late summer, early fall, because the weather has cooled down just slightly, at least in my zone seven B here, where it gets quite warm in the summer times, when the temperatures get back into the 70s or so, the roses are extremely happy and are very floriferous and the blooms are particularly beautiful and well scented. And as the season continues into the fall, the rose will start to slow down. And by the end of fall, early winter, that rose has essentially decided that it's going to go dormant. Now, there are a few variety of roses that still put out a bloom or so in the winter, but for the most part, at least in my garden, most of them are dormant um, in the dead of winter. Most of them are dormant even right now. Um, they'll be breaking dormancy soon, but they're dormant. It is at this point that a grower who is growing roses for resale purposes will be digging up the roses because the plant is dormant. It's not putting out any energy into growing leaves or flowers. He can then dig out this rose, remove the dirt from it, store it inside of the home, away from sunlight in a, in a coolish environment, not warm. It cannot be a warm environment. Otherwise the rose will break dormancy. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Then when that supplier perceives that you are ready to receive that rose in your garden they will ship this rose to you at a time when your ground is ready to be worked that just means that your soil is no longer frozen and the rose can go on the ground still dormant they send it so that that rose has time to break dormancy in your garden and breaking dormancy is the next term we need to understand here and that simply means that the weather is starting to warm up and therefore signals to that rose that it's time to wake up, that it's about leaf shoots because spring is coming. And I don't know if you've seen a rose in its first flush in the spring, a healthy, happy, vigorous rose in its first flush in the spring. I mean, it is a sight to behold. So that's the cycle a plant goes through 
throughout the growing season. Now it's important to understand that these roses that we're getting from the bags, the grocery store are also bare root roses. The big difference between that rose and the rose that you're getting from a supplier is actually huge. And the difference is this, the supplier goes to great care to ensure that you get as much of that root system as possible because that root system is going to support good growth. That rose is going to show a lot more vigor than the rose from the grocery store, even if you were to get the healthiest of those roses from the grocery store, because in order to fit those roses in those little bags or in the little gallon sized plastic containers that I just showed you, they had to cut the roots. <laughs> and I'll insert a, a video showing you what the rose that I'm about to plant, what its root system actually looks like. But the roots have been cut quite a bit in order to make them fit in these containers. I mean, this just means that this rose does not stand a chance at competing with the same of its kind that's coming from a grower. This just means that you have to adjust your expectations a little bit. You have to lower them. It might take another year before you see that vigor. And that also means that once you start to care for this rose, you need to employ methods that are going to encourage that plant to develop its root system and not necessarily produce a lot of flowers for you that year. This is what I didn't know before uh, when I was killing many of them and I've learned the hard way um, and have been having quite a bit of success with these here the past few years and I wanted to share a few of what I've done differently here to ensure that I get success with these roses. And so here are some tips for you. The first thing I would say is, it's not very surprisingly, to buy the rose as dormant as possible. And there are a few ways you can ensure this, right? So the first way is to buy a rose that doesn't have any leaves on it. Dormant roses do not have leaves on them. They don't have any growth on them. They're pretty much are just stem. Now, my rose here have a few buds on it. Um, I bought mine with buds on it, but not leaves because my other Eden rose, the one I had to cut way back, has some buds on it. And so I wanted their growth um, pattern to match up a little bit. Whereas in the store, when I was looking, there were a few that didn't even have buds on them. Those are even better than mine. Keep them, buy them dormant because you want to be in control of the situation. Some of these stores keep their bagged roses inside of the store, whereas some keep them on the outside of the store. If you have the choice, <laughs> buy the ones on the outside of the store. And that's because warmth will cause the rose to want to break dormancy because again remember the life cycle of a rose it goes dormant when it's cold and once it starts to warm back up it breaks dormancy the inside of the store in the middle of january in the middle of february is too warm for a rose and it's going to break dormancy but the problem is the middle of january or the middle of february is too early to put that rose in our garden and so you're going to have to baby that rose buy it dormant and the ones on the outside of the store are likely to follow the pattern of our roses in our garden because it's at least in the same temperature. It's not to say you can never have a rose break dormancy inside, but if you're going to do that, you have to provide supplemental lighting, right? That's why we have grow lights inside of our houses when we start seeds because we understand that the light inside of the house is not sufficient to grow things like roses. Having a rose break dormancy inside of a store where there is not supplemental lighting means leggy growth that is extremely unhealthy for that plant. If you have to buy one from inside of the store, make sure it's entirely dormant. But focus your energy on the stores that have the plants on the outside where they are in similar in a similar climate to what is in our garden. If you have to buy a plant that's broken dormancy, buy it as close to the time it's broken dormancy as possible because although on the outside it's broken dormancy at the proper time, that plant is extremely limited in nutrition and will not do well for prolonged periods of time sitting outside without proper nutrition. The last thing I want to leave you with is to forego the bags altogether, the bagged roses if you can, and get these ones. Now, the bagged roses are very economical, or I should say they're very cheap. They're not economical because they have a high failure rate, but they are very cheap. Sometimes you can find them as 
as low as $5.99 or $6.99 in some of these grocery stores. These ones tend to run more like, you've seen them as low as $10, but it's generally more like $15 or $20, but still far cheaper than buying a bare root rose. The benefit of these is that they at least have some nutrition in here. Not a ton, but it's not just, um, I don't know, some sort of mulch that it's wrapped in to keep it moist. Um, which is true of the bagged roses. The bagged roses, although it feels like there's soil in there, it's not. It's like if you open it, it's some sort of mulchy material, some kind of some sort of like shredded bark that's in there. And its sole purpose is to provide moisture. It's not there to provide nutrition. Whereas this is something more like soil. So it buys you, it buys you just a little bit more time. Can you see this? So I find that if I follow the principle of getting them dormant, getting them from the outside, and getting them in these, I can get very healthy roses. So now the question remains, having bought healthy roses, what do you do with them once you get them into your garden? Well, if your ground can be worked, which, I mean, the stores have done this much of their due diligence, they typically bring them around about when your ground is ready to be worked. Remember that when a rose is dormant, it's the time to plant it in your garden. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as your soil can be worked, you don't have to wait till early spring to plant it. In fact, I would say go ahead and directly plant it in your garden. Um, you will have to give it some water because it's not established. You have to treat it like you would treat any other new plant in your garden. So you have to give it some water, especially if there's no rain and no more snow. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it saves you a little bit more money than I saved myself <laughs> over the years. I have bought so many of these roses and I've not, I never could figure out why I kept, they kept dying. But with time, you learn and I'm, I'm thankful. I think Eden will do well while I'm going to plant it. I'll give you an update later on in the season. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I love to create special moments for my family. Sometimes it's in the garden, sometimes it's in the home, and I welcome you in this space. And next time we may be in the garden or we may be in the home, but either way we'll be here. Thank you so much for being here. Have a good day. Bye. I have to stop here and apologize and tell you if you hear a drill in the background. I'm hoping you don't. My husband is building a playhouse for our son, and I could only do this video when he was also working, and so it's possible you might hear it. I'll try really hard to only talk when he's not working, but he needs to work and I do as well.